So you're visiting Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and you're wondering what to do. In this video, we're gonna show you our favorite things to do in this really amazing town. We're Matt and Cheryl with We're in the Rockies, and on our channel, we try to help you have a great trip to the West. So let's go. Glenwood Springs is located in Western Colorado, somewhat close to more famous Colorado towns like Aspen and Vail. But Glenwood is our favorite Colorado town because of all the fun it offers. In fact, it was once named America's most fun city. And if you have our Top of the Rockies travel guide, you've got the best game plan to avoid the common mistakes travelers make when visiting these mountain towns. First up is the thing that Glenwood Springs is the most famous for, the Glenwood Hot Springs Pool. It's actually the world's largest hot springs pool. It is huge. It actually takes quite a bit of time to walk from one side of it to the other, but it's not just a pool. There's also like a hot tub area. The majority of the pool feels kind of like a bathtub. It's not too hot, not too cold. And then recently in 2019, they added the Soper Springs area, which is for kids with a splash pad and mini water slide. And my very favorite thing, the Shoshone Chute. It's like a Grizzly River Rapids meets the Lazy River, a little three minute tube ride that's pretty fun that people are loving and all sorts of ages can go on it. This is such a great place for a family. Some things that I really like about here with my experience is I like the variety of it. You've got beautiful scenery all around you because you're right in the middle of Glenwood Springs. So you've got the mountains and the town in the background. I love that the pool is, it's just right for a mom. I hate cold water. So I hop right in and have no problem, but there's a nice little hot tub area. It's all mineral water, but it's warmer. And so it's nice to just sit in there and soak. And there's even massage chairs in there, which are so cool. They massage more than your shoulders and your neck, but also your calves and ankles. But the Shoshone shoot was my very favorite. I thought that was amazing. The other thing that I think is pretty great about this place is their grill. They're actually outside grilling burgers and hot dogs. And even though I didn't eat that today, I did try their pina colada smoothie and it was delicious. Something else pretty cool about this place is that you can come in and out as much as you want within a day to just stamp your hand. And you can bring your own food in if you want to save a little bit of money. Now, this is the big down low bad thing about this place is it's over $40 per person. I can barely stomach it. I think that this is a fantastic facility. We spent about three to four hours here and it's delightful. And you're gonna see that everything in Colorado costs a lot of money. If you're thinking about visiting yourself, their typical hours in the summer are nine to nine with the kids area being open 11 to six. So you'll wanna make sure to be aware of that. I'm kind of sad that we don't get to go on the Shoshone shoots as much as we wanted to. And I would say this is a great opportunity and a really fun experience if you can stomach the $40 price tag. If the pool and tubing isn't your style, you might consider the more quaint and adult-friendly Iron Mountain Hot Springs. Though it does have a pool for families, it also has some adult-only pools that are beautifully situated on the edge of the river. Glenwood Hot Springs was more our style, but our friend and assistant Becca just happened to be visiting Glenwood at the same time we were, and they chose Iron Mountain for the ambiance. Both are fantastic, it just depends on your style. One of our very favorite things to do in Glenwood Springs is the Vaudeville Show. It's the Glenwood Vaudeville Review. It's been here for 14 years in town. The guy who started it really has had a lifetime in the theater business. He just loves theater. You can tell he's just so passionate. His name's John Goss. I think it was quite a bit of a gamble for him to start something here in Glenwood Springs 15 years ago. And the fact that it has succeeded this long is a testament to how great this show really is. We came here seven years ago and just laughed our heads off. So this is the second time we're here. And you know, when you go to something once and you have a great time, sometimes you're kind of wondering if when you go the second time, is it gonna be as good as you remembered it? And it is spectacular, it is great. The, the actors are just so funny, the skits are great. It's a variety show, they do a bunch of different things. It's pretty much all comedy. Every once in a while they'll have kind of a heartfelt song, but for the most part, it is just one comedy hit after another. It's very funny, they tell a lot of jokes. Super family friendly. It seats about 150 people in there and they do dinner and a show. So if you get here early enough, you can order the dinner. The show itself is, I think, $28 per person. The dinner runs around maybe $15 to $20 per plate. And then they just 
do a number of skits. One of my favorites is he has this photo player, this old kind of piano type looking machine from the silent movie days. And he has built an entire musical number around this quirky machine. I talked to him before the show tonight and I just told him that I loved his passion for theater. It's just great, very fun. Definitely, if you are in Glenwood Springs, work this into your schedule. Even if you're just coming through I-70 on a road trip or something, make sure to stop and check out the Glenwood Vaudeville Review. Next up is the very cool Glenwood Springs Caverns. This cool amusement park started off with just a cave that they were giving tours of, and they have expanded to add lots of roller coasters. In fact, it is the world's tallest amusement park. We did the world's biggest hot springs pool and today the world's tallest amusement park. There are about 20 attractions here from kids rides, 40 theaters to this cool amusement park coaster Defiance. It has all sorts of twists and turns and corkscrews and things like that. And what I think I'm really impressed about with this park is that when we were here seven years ago it was quite a bit different and this time it's even better than it was last time. They are constantly working to improve this place. My big draw for coming here is the mountain coaster. They have mountain coasters in many of these Colorado mountain towns, but I did a little bit of research before we came and found out that this one is the second longest. Plus those other mountain coasters, you go down them once and it can be 35 to $40 for one time down. Here you get unlimited turns, so that is pretty special about it. If you're planning on coming here, I wanted to give you a couple little tips. The first one is that I do think if you're going to be doing a little tour of Colorado, I think you should come here because it has a lot of the things you would want to do on your Colorado tour, but it's it's for a lesser price than if you were to do all these things a la carte. Like if you come here, it was $70 for adults, but we got to go up a gondola. Anytime I get to ride a gondola, I love it. We got to tour a cave and we got to go on the mountain coaster several times. The other thing is we arrived right at nine o'clock when it opened and we pretty much had the park to ourselves for an hour and a half. After that, the crowds have been here and they've been pretty strong. I think this, car, this park does a pretty good job dealing with the crowds, but even so, it was nice to be able to walk on that mountain coaster. It was wonderful. Other thing to know about is just wear some good shoes. You're walking on dirt quite a bit, and since it's on the side of a mountain, you are going to be climbing and descending. So you want to make sure you're comfortable that way. My last little tip is if you are traveling with a group of eight or more, they do parties. And it's, it's a better deal to book a party because they'll give you a lunch and they'll give you a little bit of a discount too. And that's what we do when we are traveling with a bigger group but I think this is definitely well worth the price of a ticket. Okay, the next thing to do is some hiking. So Glenwood Springs has a very famous trail, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But right now I am standing in front of the trail to Doc Holliday's grave. So this is called the Outlaw Cemetery. It's only about a half a mile to get up to the cemetery. It does go up the side of the hill. Nobody ever talks about this thing. And when Cheryl and I were here years ago, I was like, let's go check that out because I wanted to see who was buried in Outlaw Cemetery. So we did this hike and it gets up to the overlook of the city that is just gorgeous. The cemetery itself is actually kind of a, a nice little spot up there. I mean, interesting that it's way up on the hill of the cemetery. And there are two kind of Old West figures that are buried there. So Doc Holliday is the famous one. Doc Holliday was a dentist for a while and then he came out West and he got involved in the shootout at the OK Corral. Later in his life, he moved here to Glenwood Springs because in the late 1800s, everybody thought these hot springs were a source of healing. And so he came here for his help and he ended up dying here and is buried here. But there's another guy buried up there who was a real, real bad guy. His name's Kid Curry and he was part of Butch Cassidy's gang. But the views that you get and just you get away from the crowds, really nice, nice trail that nobody talks about. Okay, now the very famous trail around here is called Hanging Lake. It's a few minutes outside of town. But Cheryl and I did this a few years back and it is really a beautiful hike. It's 1.2 miles each way, so a 2.4 mile round trip. It gains over a thousand feet in elevation. And it was, it was pretty difficult because when we went, I was carrying my child on my back in an ergo carrier. And I remember being worn out by that hike, but it was really beautiful. And then you get up to this platform and they've actually made a little boardwalk there that you can sit there and view Hanging Lake. Hanging Lake is this gorgeous blue lake with a waterfall running into it. I mean, it really is a spectacular sight. And then if you go a little farther, you get to a waterfall that you can actually walk behind and kind of climb around on the rocks and in the water and stuff. A very popular activity, so popular in fact, that if you want to do it, you need a reservation to do it. So you have to get on the, the website and buy a reservation. I think it's $12 a person in order to do that hike. 
Glenwood Springs is really well known for two fun adventure activities. So you can float the river here, do some river rafting. This is the Colorado River beside me here. Right where we're at, pretty much just down the road here, is where the Roaring Fork River intersects with the Colorado River. You can go rafting on either of these rivers. They offer whitewater rafting and calm river floats. Uh, the companies will take you, I think it's about $60 per person to go floating down the river. And you're going through beautiful canyons. I mean, you can see the scenery behind me is just fantastic. So that is definitely something to check out. We did that last time and just had a great experience. Our tour guide is great. Every time we do those rafting excursions, it seems like the tour guides are really top notch. So we've really enjoyed our experiences there. The other thing to do is a bike ride along the river. So they have these two paths that going along both rivers. One's called the Glenwood Canyon Recreation Area and the other one is called the Rio Grande Trail. It goes up the Roaring Fork River and it connects Aspen and Glenwood Springs. It's like a 42 mile trail. You can do that entire path if you would like. Now they have bike rental companies in town. Last time we were here, we did this excursion as well and it was so memorable. We got our bikes in town, they shuttled us up to the trailhead, and then we just rode our bikes 14 miles down the river back into town. And we were a little concerned because we had a huge group, Cheryl's family, this is what we call the, the family extravaganza. Every two years we go on this big trip together with all of Cheryl's family, there's like 20 of us, and we have a bunch of kids. So we were a little concerned about their ability to do the biking path at the time with their ages. So as we were getting ready to go, I noticed I was pulling a trailer with my two kids in it, a little trailer on my bike. And I noticed there was a little spot in the back and we had this speaker called the party speaker that had a little disco ball on top and you could play music and shine lights and it was always kind of a party starter for the kids and I thought wouldn't it be fun if we put some music in here some people thought I was kind of crazy but when I grabbed our big speaker it actually just fit perfectly in that little trailer cargo space and so we biked down the river and I pumped the tunes on my phone and all those kids got in a line behind me. I had like 10 kids in, in a line behind me on that biking path, just jamming out to the music while we biked. How's the music? It is rocking it. Are the kids loving it? Yes. You look like the Pied Piper. You've got like a trail of 15 people behind you. They never once thought about how long the biking path was or anything like that. They just had a great time. It was one of our most memorable family experiences ever. And the nice thing about that one is it kind of goes downhill pretty much the whole way. So it's a very easy biking path. All these excursions, both the river rafting and the biking, around $50 to $60 per person if you want to do it. And, and we've done both. We highly recommend both. When you visit Glenwood Springs or any other mountain town in Colorado, you're going to have to bring your wallet because it is expensive. But our next thing we have is actually something free that is super enjoyable. And that is to go on a walk by the river. There is a beautiful river walk here. And Glenwood is just one of my favorite towns of all time because you're just snuggled in these beautiful green mountains. The awesome and amazing Colorado River is running right through it. You can see people riding the gondola up the mountain, which we're gonna do later on on this trip. There are so many beautiful things to see and do, and, and the path is really well lit. It's wide. right behind me is part of the walking path, and it's a bridge, and you get to go over train tracks and view the hot springs and go over the river and the freeway. And it, this is just a happening place at night, and it's really nice and peaceful in the morning, but it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then last night, Matt and I were walking along it, we headed into the Old Town District and people were outside enjoying outdoor dining with the little charming lights ahead. It was really beautiful and fun. I'm standing here in front of the Hotel Colorado right now. This is a really cool old building here in Glenwood Springs. It was built in 1893 and the owner or the original guy who built it just spent a ton of money on this. He spared no expense getting this place uh, really immaculate. And it's interesting because it's more in an Italian style where a lot of the rest of the town hotels are in a Swiss style. Cheryl and I went in there last night and really had a good time. The lobby is beautiful. The inside is really nice. Uh, they have a gorgeous gardens area outside with a fountain. And I guess in the very earliest days when he built it, he installed the world's tallest fountain. It would shoot 180 feet high. 
Uh, they don't, they no longer have that one there anymore, but they do have a little fountain courtyard area there. But the thing that we learned that was really cool was their story anyway, their legend here is that this is where the teddy bear was invented. So the story is Teddy Roosevelt came and visited here. He went out on a hunt and did not get anything. And so the ladies around town kind of got together and made him a little bear because he was kind of upset that he didn't get any animals. So they made him a little bear. His daughter Alice named it Teddy after him. So became the teddy bears. So in there they have a little display of these old teddy bears as well as a gift shop where you can buy a teddy bear that you want. So so if you want to stay here it's going to run you $350 at a minimum. Cheryl says it goes way way up from there. So kind of expensive but even if you don't stay here kind of worth coming over here and just checking out. Glenwood Springs might just be my favorite Colorado mountain town and one thing that's really interesting about it is how it was founded. Most of the towns in Colorado were founded on mining, but not here. A guy from Iowa came on over and he was planning on mining, but what he found were the Glenwood Hot Springs. And so to honor his hometown of Glenwood in Iowa, he named it Glenwood and threw springs on it as kind of a little marketing to get people to visit here. And back in the day, mineral pools were all the rage. That was the answer to any health ailment someone would have. And so that was kind of what got this whole town started. Even though I do love this mountain town, there are a couple things I don't like about it. Number one is the price. It's just expensive, food, activities, everything. Oh, and lodging, especially expensive. The other thing is just the marijuana shops everywhere. We've had to have some interesting conversations with our kids. But the last thing that I do not like is that I think whoever designed the roads in this town may have been partaking in the marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> this place is seriously like driving around a spaghetti bowl. It is crazy little mini half roundabouts. And so when Matt and I drive around, we've got our GPS ready. We have a smile on our face because we're pretty sure we're gonna make a wrong turn. So we just leave a little early and just enjoy the ride. Okay, the next thing to do is to come down here to Restaurant Row. This is right downtown in the historic district here. There's all these restaurants and cool little shops right around here just to a real old historic area. Behind me right there is the train station. This is an Amtrak stop right here. So people can stop at the Amtrak right there on their way through, walk across the street to the Hotel Denver, stay the night, just walk around town, no vehicle required, and then head back and hop on the train. We'll discuss what you need to know about lodging in just a moment, but if you're visiting Colorado, check out our Top of the Rockies travel guide for a super simple game plan to see the best of Colorado's mountain towns, complete with walking tours, a step-by-step -step game plan for planning your days, and a lodging guide. Okay, let's talk about lodging for a little bit here. So this is the lodge that we stayed at or the hotel that we stayed at last night. A cute little Swiss-themed place here, and you'll find a lot of those these Swiss-themed places around Glenwood Springs. I already covered the Hotel Colorado, so you might consider staying there if you're looking for a unique historic experience. Also the Hotel Denver. The last time we came here, we stayed in a gorgeous VRBO log cabin up kind of between here and Aspen. It was just a stunner, that was awesome. What you can expect if you're going to stay in Glenwood Springs is probably an average of about $250 a night. Okay, the next thing to do in Glenwood Springs is to visit Maroon Bells. This is actually closer to Aspen, Colorado. Check out our Aspen video to learn more about Maroon Bells and all the things there are to do around Aspen. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, go west, young traveler.